in this video today we're going to be looking at seven things that the pandemic has revealed about the wedding industry okay so seven things that this current pandemic has revealed about the wedding industry so let's get it The first thing the pandemic has revealed about the wedding industry is the wedding industry is not an essential business. You know, it's not it's not considered essential. I mean, I'm just stating the facts here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the government say it's not essential. So, you know, don't blame me. Don't take it out on me. I'm just uh, I'm just carrying the message, you know, so don't shoot me. You know, I'm just relaying it to you. A wedding is an event, okay? It's a live event, but it's an event. And all the, you know, event businesses, you know, they were all shut down, you know? No gathering of over, what, like 50 people, 20 people in some states, 10 in some. So a wedding is considered an event business. So all the events, all the gatherings were all shut down. So the clubs were shut down and some of them are still shut down at the recording of this video, which is August. And, um, you know, so all the concerts and festivals, anything that has to do with a huge gathering of people, everything was shut down. So I guess we learned during this pandemic that a wedding is not an essential business, which means people can do without weddings, right? So... Hey, I mean, you live and you learn, right? I mean, who would have known that, you know, people don't need to get married? I guess, you know, they can get married, but the event itself is, I guess, considered not an essential thing. Anyway, so that's number one. I, I guess uh, the pandemic revealed that a wedding event is not an essential, I guess, business or whatever. Anyway, so number two is lower your deposits. During this pandemic, a lot of people have, I'm sure, given back deposits, especially the ones that are, you know, refundable. A lot of people have issued a lot of deposits back to, you know, clients. So with this, with me, what it taught me is, you know, as a wedding filmmaker, you need to, you know, I mean, I'm not just going to say, a wedding filmmaker but this is my area so I'm just gonna say as a wedding filmmaker um, my deposits are low you know I always have like low deposits I'm not gonna tell you how much I do my deposits you know I've seen a lot of people do 25% upfront 50% uh, uh, deposits but you know that's just a huge amount of money that you're getting up front you know so in case things like this happen which are unforeseen events and you have to give that money back it's not a problem but if you have 10 people asking for their money back you know it's thank god i've had my deposits lower because when i had three four people asking for refunds you know i gave them back their their money you know because it wasn't that hard for the me the worst thing you can do is have people you know pay you a lot of money up front because I mean I've I, I've got all the money sometimes before a wedding unless like a month before there have been some people some you know couples that have like paid me months in advance you know everything like oh we want to pay everything right now and they pay me everything but the only reason why I hate that is because when the day of the wedding comes and I go do the job, I go do the job, it kind of feels, you know, it feels like I'm doing it for free because at this point I've already squandered the money. So it kind of feels like I'm doing the wedding for free. I'm filming it for free because, I mean, they gave me money like three, four months ago. So I always like getting the money, the rest of my money on the day of the wedding. So at least that way I feel like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm getting paid, you know. But I mean... To each is on, you know, you guys can do it however you want to do it. If something like this happens and you have to refund back, like, let's say $2,000 and you already used it on something, you know, it's just, um, I would rather take, you know, 
small deposits and then get the lump sum on the day of the wedding. At least I've done my job, I've, I've, I've got all the footage and um, we're good to go. So which brings me to um, the third thing here is rewrite um, the refund policy. So what the pandemic has taught me is I have to like rewrite my whole refund policy. So right now my refund policy is I refund them in, you know, within 30 days, which is really good. It's really good. I'm proud of myself that I kind of made this, you know, made it longer. But now it just makes even more sense. If somebody wants a refund, you don't want to tell them like you're going to refund them immediately. You know, that's just you can refund. You might have the money now, but. What I suggest you do is give yourself some time, you know, give yourself a cushion, like, you know, give yourself at least 30 to 60 days of them, uh, of them getting the refund. And that should be in the contract. And if they sign that, they can't be like, oh, I, I need my money now. You can be like, it's in the contract. You sign that, you know, if it comes to a refund, um, you know, I have um, 30 to 60 days to refund you the money, you know, because it's like. You can't just come up with the money right away out your ass unless you got it like that. But most of us, you know, sometimes we use the money and we need time to, you know, um, recoup, recoup the money back and do whatnot. So um, I recommend that all you guys, you know, if your refund policy is not up to date, you have to take a look at the refund policy and update it to whereby, you know, you give yourself time to refund the money to the client. And also, um, you have to at least lower your deposits, you know, the deposits, the reservation fees, make sure at least you lower them to an amount whereby it's not going to take you long to come up with that amount in case like they want the refund back. I mean, of course, a lot of us have like, you know, the no refund policy, um, on the deposit, but then again, it depends on the amount that they're giving you. If they're giving you like quarter of the full, you know, payment, I mean, they can, I mean, it depends on your contract, but what I'm saying is at least don't have, if you have to refund the money back, if you have to refund the reservation, then, you know, just don't make it an amount that is so high that, you know, it's going to take you a couple months to come up with that money. So that's those points. So number four is be careful how you structure your business. So this pandemic has revealed that, you know, it's, I mean, it's the harsh truth, you know, it's the truth that some people might not be able to get government um, assistance, right? They might not be able to be assisted, to be bailed out by the government. And this all depends on, you know, how you structure your business. So the way you structure your business will determine whether you're going to get um, a stimulus or not, or whether you're going to get a grant or not. It all depends on how you structure your business. So this pandemic has taught me that, you know, you have to structure your business in a way that you position yourself when things like these unforeseen events happen, at least um, you are able to kind of um, be bailed out by the banks or whatever, by the government or whatever. So watch how you structure your business. So be careful how you structure your business. So number five is um, the one and done business model. So this here means like, you know, the wedding business is a one and done business model. So that's the problem with the wedding business. It's a one and done business model. So what does a one and done mean? For some of you who don't know what a one and done is, a one and done is like a one night stand, right? Well, for some of you that have had a one night stand, you know what I mean, but you know, it's supposed to be like just one night and that's it. Like you don't talk to the person again or you don't see them again or you, you go, you, you know, you're traveling and you whatever, one night stands, right? So you only serve the client once and you're done. You know, it's not a business model where you have repeat clients. You only serve the client once and you're done. That's why every month you got to keep getting more weddings 
and make sure you've booked uh, a lot of weddings in advance to where when those months come up, you already have weddings that you booked like a few, like, you know, six months ago or sometimes a year ago, stuff like that. So it's a one and done business model. That's the, f that's the problem about a wedding, uh, about the wedding business. It's like people only get married once. It's like a funeral, right? It's the same business model as a wedding. It's only a one-time event, right? At least the good thing is like the wedding is like those people can get remarried again and still call you when they find their new flame or whatever. But I mean, when somebody dies, it's a wrap, right? So like a funeral home business, it's like a, you know, a one and done. You only die once, right? You're not going to keep selling, you know, coffins to want to the same, like to the same person. You only, one person gets one coffin and that's that, right? And in some cases, some people get burnt. Anyways, let's not go too far with that death stuff. Anyway, so the wedding business is a one and done business model, which is not a good thing because in this pandemic, I mean, I already knew that it was a one and done thing, but this pandemic has it's revealed more to the, some people who thought like uh, a wedding business was bulletproof. It's not. You know, like if people can't have weddings, like, you know, it's a one and done thing. You don't have repeat clients. You only serve people once and that's about it. Of course, they can, you know, give you referrals and stuff. But the people that you just videographed getting married, those people are done. I let You only see them maybe at a another person's wedding or whatever. Right. So that's uh, what the pandemic has revealed to some people. I mean, I already knew this, but this is just more confirmation that it's not a very good business model. You know, I mean, we make money here, but it's not a good it's not a good business model because it's a one and done business model, which is not a good thing. But hey, whatever, you know what I mean? To each his own. We're making money here. So, I mean, uh, so what's the solution? I mean, the solution is uh, you can kind of like, you know, maybe get into a business that's not a one and done, a business where you have repeat clients, a business like a, a barber shop, like, you know, you have to groom people, they'll keep coming back because, I mean, their hair is going to keep growing. Salon, I mean, nails, girls are always going to need that, you know, um, food, groceries. Anyways, I'm not going to get into other business models, but what the pandemic just revealed is this business model is a one and done business model and that's a flow anyway so next let's get to the next point so point number six is diversify what the pandemic has taught a lot of people and me myself is you know don't put all your eggs in one basket because when that basket drops all your eggs crack right so uh you have to diversify um, you know, um, I mean, you can get into other forms of, so how do you diversify? Yeah. So you can get into like other forms of filming. If that's what you want to do your whole life, if you want to film, you can get into other forms of filming. You can film movies, you can start filming documentaries to make money. You can start, um, filming real estate videos. You can do quinceaneras. You can um, do birthdays, you can do live events, um, you know, you can do music videos. You can do a lot of things that have to do with filming. So you still stay in the same industry, but you just kind of like diversify yourself. You know, you just do different things other than just doing just wedding videography. You know, if you don't get clients, maybe this month you have maybe just one wedding and maybe on top of that, you got two or three music videos you got to shoot, or you have some real estate videos you're shooting, or you have a quinceanera, or you have a live event, or you have a birthday for some 100-year-old person. You know, I, I did a wedding, uh, I'm sorry, I did a wedding, yeah, I did a wedding slash birthday. This couple had a wedding um, on their grandfather's birthday, and this dude was 105. This dude was 105. So that's how you diversify yourself as a filmmaker, right? You can still, you know, you can still do film, but just do different areas of film. Because, I mean, the fundamentals of film are the same. Once you learn how to ride a bike, you can ride any bike. 
once you learn how to film maybe let's say weddings you can feel you can at least have an idea of how to film music videos you have an idea of how to film real estate videos you know you, it's a different style or whatever but you can at least you know the fundamentals of how to use a camera and lighting and stuff like that so um it, it's going to be easy for you to transition into the same realm of the same industry so you can diversify yourself that way. But of course, if you want, you can start getting into whole new industries. You can start doing real estate, um, wholesaling or whatever, flipping. You can, you know, start uh, drop shipping if you want. I've never done drop shipping, but hey, it's hot. You can start trading stocks. You can, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. You can start cutting grass for people. Yeah, so just diversify yourself, guys. Diversify your income streams, okay? Which brings me to the last point, number seven, which is save money. So the pandemic taught a lot of people that they need to save money. It showed a lot of people that they're broke. Because honestly, I mean, this is just facts. I mean, if it wasn't for the stimulus checks, let's just, let's just say like, um, you lose your job right now, today. You lose your job right now. And um, you don't have any, like, how long will it take for you to, you know, go on foreclosure or be homeless, you know? You got all these bills you're paying. Like, if you, like if you lose your job right now and you don't have any savings, a lot of, pe a lot of people can't survive more than three months. Some even more than two months, they can't survive. You know, because a lot of people live above their means, you know, just because they're making money and every weekend they're just going to the bars or they're eating out every weekend. Oh, Applebee's. Yeah, we in Applebee's. We, we in freaking Longhorn. All this like. So when things like this happen, now they, they start relying on the government. They start relying on stimulus checks. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's some rich people who like they don't want stimulus checks like. They're looking at stimulus shit, like what the hell is this? Anyways, so this pandemic has taught us to save money. It's taught a lot of people that you need to save money. So same thing as a wedding filmmaker, when things are good, when you know, it's sunshine and rainbows, you're getting weddings, a lot of weddings every, every month, every week you're getting weddings, save that money. You know what I mean? Save some of that money. Because you never know when times like this will come whereby, you know, it's you don't have any money. So just save your money, especially if you have a house, like things happen, you know, AC, uh, freaking, you know, water heater. A lot of things happen uh, when you have a house. So just make sure that you save money. And um, yeah. So anyways, so it, ta it taught a lot of people that they need to save money so that's that guys that's the seven things that the pandemic has taught me about the wedding industry so number one was the wedding industry is not considered an essential business number two was lower your deposits number three was rewrite your refund policy number four was be careful how you structure your business Number five was the one and done business model. Number six was diversify yourself and your businesses. Number seven, save money. So those are the seven things that I wanted to share with you guys as wedding filmmakers. Um, I hope this video helped you guys to kind of like think about certain things you can be doing right now or moving forward, what you're going to start doing. And um, hopefully you found the video valuable. And if so, guys, make sure you um, click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I highly recommend that you subscribe, especially if you are a filmmaker. Because I'm going to be doing some, I'm planning on doing a few different things in a, in a few coming months. And uh, you're going to benefit a lot from that if you are a filmmaker so thank you for watching guys it's your boy francis and i'll see you guys in the next one what i want you to do is soften that your is eyes. beautiful I want you to just look down. Mm -hmm. but look this way so i can focus on her
Hold it right there. Don't move. Let me goof off the dress. I don't want to be in your Oh, shot. go ahead. No, you're good. Right. You're good. I just want to goof off the dress because I'm Yeah, you good. I'm, I'm all the way. I'm, I'm close up. I'm tight. Okay. 